All right, everyone, here we are relaxing on a Sunday, drinking coffee. Cheers, YouTube family. I hope you're doing well. I hope you had a great weekend. And here's the uh, Hoka Rincones. If you didn't see the first impression from five o'clock yesterday, go check it out. Upper right hand corner, just click on that card. Uh, it's exciting, it's an exciting shoe. And I'm gonna take them out for a three mile spin here in a little bit. Uh, and then after that, we'll talk about, it's amazing, packing for a trail run. Pat, it's crazy, I can't believe I'm even saying those words. So. Uh, we're going to go get some altitude tomorrow, and did you hear, so I put out on Twitter yesterday, does anybody know if Killian Jornet of Spain now lives in Norway, if he is racing the Pikes Peak Marathon? I had heard rumors that he is. It sounds like he, so a uh, uh, Twitter fan, somebody who's, I don't remember your name, maybe Devin, I think, uh, he did some research and found on Killian's Instagram feed that he listed all of his races, I think back in May, for the 20, for the summer 2019 racing season. And sure enough, he found the Pikes Peak Marathon is gonna is on Killian's schedule. So if anybody has any, any more information, that's amazing because my goal is to race the ascent, the Pikes Peak ascent on, on Saturday and then the Pikes Peak the Pikes Peak Marathon is on Sunday, uh, so Killian, and I've, oh gosh, I've heard maybe uh, Jim Walmsley might show up, and I'm ho like, what if Joe Gray, Jim Walmsley, and Killian Jornet battle at the Pikes Peak Marathon? That'd be amazing. I know uh, Joe Gray is very interested in racing the ascent this year, but can you imagine that battle between those three guys? Anyway, I'm excited. All right, let's lace up Hoka Rincones. Oh man, the Rincon video just published on the YouTube about an hour ago. The comments are rolling in. It's pretty exciting. I'm glad uh, we've struck a chord with this shoe, the Hoka Rincon. Check it out. All right, lacing up now, getting out of my recovery sandals, also from Hoka, into the Rincones. Although, well, hold on. Although, I'm not, I'm going to do better in the next now but especially in the next let's say a week from now 10 days from now walking around my house more barefoot versus uh, in these recovery sandals that are just i think there's a lot of benefit to going barefoot uh, as much as possible just to just to work different muscles and tendons and ligaments in your lower ankle and feet um, so you're not being kind of babied or pampered in these very very comfortable focus sliders so that's one of my goals moving forward for staying healthy all right All right, everyone, this is going to be a good exercise for me to go through packing for a trail run, a mountain run, because it's been a while. Because of the injury, I haven't had to really go through the mental process of making sure I have all the gear I need to stay safe up on the mountains, uh, to stay safe out in the wild with wild animals and make sure I have all the nutrition I need. So I'm going to lay out everything and along the way, all the gear here on this big table and also go through some points for you to consider when you're laying out your gear. Uh, and okay, I'll, I'll wait for that in a second. But first, number one, you got to have a vest, right? I have a couple vests, an ultimate direction vest and then a raid light vest. So let's begin here. This is like the, uh, how would you, what's a good metaphor for this? This is your uh, this is your safety blanket, all right? This allows you to carry everything else out on the trails, all right? So let's, let's start laying it out. All right, let's walk you through this real quick. Everything starting from head to toe. First of all, my green hat, but I'm also gonna add on the neck gaiter just to keep the sun off my neck. I'll bring my buff, my sriracha buff, because uh, guess what? Yes, it can be very, very cold on top of the mountains, even in July. Uh, then we got my, my dry fit shirt. 
uh, my vest from Raid Light, my two bottles, which are both, these are 12 ounces, so 24 ounces total. And I'll talk to you about the distance that I'm going here in a minute. Uh, we'll have my lightweight uh, red jacket. Believe it or not, this is from Brooks. That's right, Brooks has a, I bought this probably five years ago. Absolutely love it. It's still like no major holes in it and it's just so lightweight. It's just perfect for cutting out the wind on top of those mountains if it kicks up. Uh, I'm gonna go with half tights just to keep the hamstrings warm, just to, once again, just in case it gets chilly. And then two, and then uh, light, a lightweight pair of gloves. Uh, the big question, you know what? I don't think I'm gonna bring the handheld. I set this out there though as a second option for you to consider if you prefer a handheld, but I like to keep my hands open for trail running and mountain running especially because when you go down, you might go down hard and I just like being able to have my hands free to catch myself on the rocks, etc., etc. So we're gonna set that aside. My darn tough socks, love darn tough for mountain running. Just a little thicker uh, for, I don't know, it, it, for some reason they just have a little more cushion and it feels good on those sharp rocks up in the Rocky Mountains. And then the big question will be the Speed Cross 5s or the Super Cross from Solomon's that I just picked up. Those, that'll be a game day decision tomorrow. Uh, and as far as electronics go, so if, okay, we'll talk more about this in a second, but a headlamp is always a good idea. And then a spot device. This is a GPS spot device, so you can be found anywhere in the world in case you get uh, lost. And yes, there is an SOS button in case you get hurt and lost. So if you literally can't drag yourself off the mountain, this is a spot device. Uh, this is an old one, but it still works just fine. And then moving on here, yes, I'm gonna bring the drone up for you guys to get some beautiful drone shots. Usually I don't bring this, uh, but I'm gonna be going nice easy and slow tomorrow so that'll be good the drone and then of course the gimbal and then i guess the gopro is charging right now so that is all the stuff okay here's a few factors to consider when planning out your trail running gear all right so i should have also mentioned i'm going to be trying out for the first time a spring energy gel which if you're going out for a 30 mile 40 mile long training run don't test out a gel for the first time uh, because if it just doesn't sit well in your stomach and you're 15 miles away from your car and you're like losing everything, it's just not a good idea. So my run tomorrow is not a 30 mile, it's gonna be a 12 mile, okay? So that's not, you know, it's not short, but it's not a huge all day effort out on the trails. Okay, some factors to consider when planning out your trail running gear. Uh, this can go without saying, but ne it never hurts to just refresh our memories a little bit. First of all, of course, the weather. In fact, as I'm talking right now, the rain has started and it's better to be safe than sorry. However, for everything I'm about to tell you, I like to, yes, at times go very, very fast in the mountains, meaning I, you know, in fact, the mountain I'm going to tomorrow, I was able to snag the, uh, the king of the mountain last summer. And what you're gonna be see, basically I had shorts on, socks and shoes and my watch and maybe a hat and maybe sunglasses, okay? So that was it. And I was, no, no food, no water for 12 miles. It was fine. And, and okay, another factor to, to consider, how far out away from civilization are you going? All right, so if there's other people around, like tomorrow, I'm gonna bet a lot of money, there's probably gonna be at least 40 cars parked in the parking lot for this mountain. Meaning, I'm not out there alone. If I break my leg, there's tons of people around who I could say, hey, could you give me a hand here? Cause I have a broken leg. It's like, but think about if your trails are, you're going out in the middle of nowhere and there's no one for miles and you don't have cell service. And that's another thing to consider. Do you have cell service? If not, it just doesn't hurt to consider uh, picking up something like a spot device to stay safe out there in the mountains. Um, so, okay, weather, uh, how far away from civilization are you getting? Uh, the elevation that you're running at, all right? Because elevation impacts so many different factors, but if, if you're not used to elevation, uh, that could really, it can, it can make you dehydrated, it can make you uh, dizzy in the head. A lot of things can happen at higher elevations. And for vice versa, I live at elevation. If I was to go run a, a 50K in Florida in the swamps, the humidity, I guarantee, would wreck me. It would just wreck me. Like, I'm not used to hot, humid conditions. So, um, anyway, just another thing to consider is the elevation you're running at. And one last point to consider for planning out your trail running gear is what time of day are you starting the run? 
Uh, if you're uh, training for a 50 mile or 100 mile race, there's a very good chance you're going to be doing uh, some of the race at night, which means you want to practice running at night because your brain, it's hard to run on the trails at night. You're thinking about the animals. You have to be very focused, like psychologically, like really mentally focused on the task at hand. Uh, so obviously if you're starting at four in the afternoon, there's a really good chance there could be, especially here in the Rockies, that a, a nasty thunderstorm could roll through. It happens almost every single day up in the mountains over there so anyway just something else to consider uh, of course it impacts whether or not to carry a headlamp it's always a good idea to carry a headlamp I will not do that tomorrow because once again I know the mountains so so well and there's people like there's gonna be at least 200 people up there hiking tomorrow where I'm going so anyway that's something else to consider though is the time of day and yes gear is the keyword and the question of the day what's your like what's your go-to essential piece of gear for trail running and especially a little bit longer trail running where it is smart to carry uh, to carry a little more gear in your vest and not just go you know not just go in your shorts and your t-shirt which I love doing that okay but it is nice to have some essentials just in case something were to happen up there so that's the question of the day of the day all right I think that is all for tonight I gotta pack all this up now into the vest and then start editing so I can hit the sack and basically wake up as early as possible all right seek beauty work hard and love each other see you tomorrow